guys, it is Princess Educator, and today I'll be going over 10 tips for child care for beginners. So in this video, I will be giving you guys 10 tips if you are thinking about working in a child care center, a preschool, or a early childhood program. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, number one, you want to research the daycare slash preschool centers in your area. So on Google, you're going to type in preschool daycares near me. So after you have clicked that enter button, it's going to go ahead and give you guys a list of the daycare centers that is close by you. All right, so as you are researching those daycares, you're going to click on one of those names. You're going to click on it and you're going to read their Google reviews. Yes, Google reviews. So you're going to see their Google rating. I'll say if it's less than, uh, I'll say less than three, you need to stay away from it. I am telling you this from experience. Please stay away from them. You will also like to read those comments, those reviews. So you're going to scroll on down with your phone. You're going to scroll on down and you're going to read those comments. You're, you're going to highlight the words that say micromanagement, um, rude administrators, rude staff, um, that the owner or whoever is cutting your paycheck or cutting somebody else's paychecks, you want to stay away from those preschool centers. You want to stay away from them. So you need to cross that out of your list. If that is ABC Daycare that has all those comments and bad reviews, you don't need to apply for them. Do not call. Don't click on their website. Just go to the next line, okay? <laughs> Keep it moving. You want to go ahead to the next line. So any negative um, reviews about pay, lack of pay, um, micromanaging, um, that is not clean, dirty, all of that, you want to avoid those you're going to read the center's handbook so um, so after you have found the daycare that you're interested in you're gonna go ahead and contact them or apply online and they will bring you in in person and you'll get to meet them in your interview now the time that they will introduce their handbooks and things like that is when your background check has came clear um, you already passed the interview process and now it is time for your staff orientation so normally sometimes I don't I don't agree with some of the old way of the staff orientation but you want to make sure that you are reading your employee handbook um, ask them if you can read their family handbook that they give to parents. So you would like to know what are the parents' expectations are, and you would like to know what are your expectations are as working as a employee. So you're going to read that. In the employee handbook, it's going to tell you the dress code, um, tardiness. Um, if you have to call in because you're sick, it's going to tell you when that you need to do that. Some of them may say an hour before your shift or two hours. It may vary depending on that company. So you're going to read that. You're going to make sure that you can adhere to that. If you know that in the past that you are not able to do, able to adhere to that policy, you need to just don't need to come back. Um, so you would like to read that up on there. So you want to read all those pages. I know it's probably 15 pages, but you need to read it. You need to pay attention to whatever video orientation that they have. Pay attention to those videos and read that handbook. All right, four, you would like to know what is your pos your position title and your um, duties, your responsibilities. So sometimes they'll give you guys a job description. Now, if you have applied online, it basically already told you beforehand before you even signed onto the job. So they're probably not going to tell you after the orientation because if I posted the job application online, I expect you to read that before you hit the, uh, the apply button. So make sure you read it. Read all the responsibilities, the duties, read all of that. And make sure that you are comfortable of changing diapers um that you are comfortable of 
potty training and things like that you probably need some help um, along the run maybe this is your first time actually being in a preschool center that provides a potty training program so if you would like to alert them that tell them that like um, you know I'm not used to potty training um, you know a, a toddler so you would like to let them know ahead of time so yes make sure you know your job duties um, I know a lot of times, um, depending on your position, you may have to do lesson plans. Now, if you are, let's just say if you are hired as a floater and you're taking over that classroom for a while, you will need to do those same duties that the lead teacher does, such as submitting lo lesson plans and things like that. So, that's the nature of our industry. You just have to assume position and take over. Number five, you will want you will like to follow the dress code. So depending on the preschool center that you have applied for, they may have a dress code such as you can wear teacher tees, uh, teacher tee, or you can or you have to wear a certain color collar shirt. For example, a blue collar shirt with khaki pants and closed toe shoes. Some of them may allow Crocs and some of them may not. Um, I really don't prefer that at Crocs. Ugh, just, it's just me. Um, but I do recommend you to wear an ankle support shoe. So my favorite shoe is the Skechers brand. I might show you guys my favorite shoes, but let me show you. Okay, so this is the shoe. Um, in my child care, it's my first love video. I talked about this shoe, but this shoe is amazing. So it doesn't have the lace because I struggled tying my shoes. Um, I can tie, but I don't like to mess with it. I just don't like it. I, maybe it's just me. I cannot stand it. I love slip on shoes. I think that's why a lot of people wear Crocs, but there's other shoes that you can wear. Um, but yeah, so I like this. Um, it, I don't have any shoe laces. You can adjust it depending on your fit but it looks like this so it is ankle supported it's by Skechers it's the arch fit and it is amazing it's so comfortable it feels like you are walking on a cloud okay it is amazing it's breathable I love this shoe oh especially if you are working with kids especially in the toddler room and infant room yeah you're gonna need some comfortable shoes so I recommend these now they are a pretty pity Okay, they're about $90, but let me tell you something, it is worth it. Now, if you order these on the website, you can do Afterpay, Carolina, whatever you have to do. Girl, get these shoes. Now, if you are like, mm -mm. now there are affordable shoes at Walmart that you guys can try out. I think it's the Avia, A-V-I-A, that brand. I was using those shoes for a while before I transitioned to these. Um, but yeah, so... Any type of comfortable shoe that has some type of memory foam and sole, I do recommend you guys to purchase those. But let's go back to the dress code. But you want to make sure that you are adhering to the dress code. Some some of them may have other rules that you cannot wear, um, long earrings, things like that. So you want to make sure that you are able to adhere to that. Um, also, ask them if they are going to provide the uniform. Some of them may not. Um, it all depends. It all depends. So, you just have to find the center that is for you. And also, I would like to add, avoid wearing clothes or shoes and jewelry pieces that you do not want to get lost dirty. Okay? I have to say this because I think that a lot of people... Now, you probably work at a center where you can wear whatever as long as you're decent but if things get on you such as bodily fluids you know what I mean from the nose and other parts and you get that on you and that is your favorite jean your favorite shirt you know those jeans that make your body look nice I recommend you to pick something else okay wear something else that you really don't care about so that's all I got to say about that Part. Number six, you would like to be on time. Now, another thing about the on time word, on time is late. Okay, so if you are scheduled to work from 7:30 to 3:30, you would like to be there at least 
okay? At least 7.20 or 7.25. So that time you will have time to walk through the parking lot. You will have time to um, use the bathroom, clock in, set your stuff up, your belongings up, put your stuff in the refrigerator. All of that before it's time for you to clock in or whatever. It, it all depends on how your center um, does their clock in system machine. I know some of them will have rules. You cannot clock in no more than five minutes before your shift. Make sure you read that handbook. That's why I said read that handbook. All right, number seven. So once you, uh, you have entered the classroom, go ahead and wash your hands. So anytime that you're entering in any classroom, let's just say you walk in the classroom, you wash your hands, and you need to go to the supply room before your kids come over. Go and get those supplies, come back in, put that stuff up, wash your hands again. So every time that you enter your classroom or somebody else's classroom, wash your hands. If you are coming in from outside, make sure you wash your hands and the students' hands. Um, you go to wash your hands before you um, before meals, before prepping meals. If you are t dealing with different types of um, meal content, such as meat, and then let's say you got the bread for a hot dog. Okay, you got the hot dog. If you don't have a utensil, a little tongue, you need to wash those hands. Get your put your put on your food glove and put the meat inside the bun. Okay, or if you're pouring after you have completed that bun, you need to wash your hands again. Wash your hands, pour the milk. So every time that you're dealing with another food content, wash your hands. If you are uh, if you just got down wiping Susie. Um, nose. Wash your hands and wash her hands. Okay. The moral of the story, wash your hands. Okay. This is how germs spread. This is how you get sick. And that's how a lot of people who come into child care, they're not thinking it because they didn't watch this video. But wash your hands. Wash your hands. If you touch the saliva of a child, put it towards in his mouth, put it in the um, dirty basket. Put that in there wash it later wash your hands and wash that child's hand okay more of the story wash your hands all right number eight so the day before i should have put this probably after number three you want to eat a breakfast so you want to make sure you are eating something before you go into work i'm telling you working with children will drain your energy and i'm not being rude i'm not being mean I'm being 100% honest. Eat something. You may not be a huge breakfast eat, a huge breakfast eater. I understand it, but you gonna wish that you ate something because, yeah, make sure you eat something. Okay, so eat something. Grab some coffee if you like to go to Starbucks. Go ahead and grab that. Drink that before you go inside the building, especially if it's a hot beverage. You don't want it. You don't want to put it up high and. A child bump into it and it's on him and now he has burns okay so make sure you consume that before you come in eat that food eat 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 I'm telling you eat I remember my first day working in child care so you know I'm like okay just working with kids so there's a lot of people they underplay child care okay they think it's babysitting it's not babysitting okay I'm like okay I'm doing this my feet was painful let's just say that oh my gosh I was standing so much walking around <laughs> my feet hurt it so bad that's why I recommend those shoes make sure you have some nice shoes I know y'all like y'all crop if you like it okay but I recommend a nice closed toe shoe and make sure you eat something good um, so yeah, um, I also recommend you guys to pack a good lunch. So usually during the orientation, they'll ask you, do you have any questions? Or during the interview, ask them, um, so do you guys provide a break room area for your staff? Sometimes they, they'll say no, um, or, or if they had, or ask them if they have a microwave on site that the staff can use. If they do not have one, you need to pack a cold lunch. All right. All right. So um, the reason why I say this is depending on your hours, your break may be an hour and sometimes it'll be 30 minutes. So if you have 30 minutes, that means you have that 30 minute interval to walk to your car, drive to McDonald's, wait in that line, especially if it's during lunchtime, wait in that line. That's already 10 minutes right there. 
Then you're waiting, you're waiting. A lady got mad about her order. You're still waiting more. Now you have 20 minutes left in your break. Probably less than that. You get your food, blah, blah, blah. Now you're trying to chug it in your mouth because you decided to eat out. Okay? I recommend you to pack a lunch. Pack a good lunch. If they have a microwave, you can pack your favorite meal that needs to be heated, heated like spaghetti and lasagna. Oh my gosh. So I recommend you guys to pack a lunch, a lunch um, even if it's a cold lunch or a hot lunch. Okay, number 10, which is our last tip. Find a mentor and you would like to do research such as watching videos. As you can see, you're watching a video now. So you want to look up child, more child care tips. You want to watch videos of how to do effective um, hand washing, how to do diaper changes. Watch those videos, okay? I recommend you to watch, watch that the day before. Watch those videos so you can make sure that you are following those steps. So they'll be like, oh wow, she is amazing. Um, you want to watch those videos. Do your research before jumping to this field. Um, I have worked with people. They're like, I had asked them, you know, change the diaper. They're looking at me like, <laughs> like, I'm supposed to do that? Yes. We change diapers. You have to change diapers. Okay? Um, we Yes, you have to wipe his nose. You know, things like that. So, make sure that you're watch, watching those videos so you'll know what to expect when you come into this industry and um also i have a video that you guys can watch is the child care is my first love video and i go in more to dip and it's about two hours and 23 minutes um go ahead and watch that video i will have that link down below that you guys can watch that so yeah you guys this is the end of this video and i'll touch you guys later and make sure you watch part two watch part two so i'll see you guys later bye